Uh, let's invite the first corporate on the show now. Sunita Reddy, MD of Apollo Hospitals, is with us. Sunita, first, a big congratulations. You've been named in the inaugural list of CNBC's change makers. Women who've transformed business. They are women who've defied the odds, innovated and thrived in a volatile business landscape. So congratulations. Sunita, mm -hmm. um, you know, the question is that the volatility is probably the challenges are going to continue. Um, where are we on the standardized rates for hospitals? Have discussions begun with stakeholders or is this something which is going to take place perhaps post-elections? I believe it will take place post-elections. Um, but all of us, you know, we have already created standardized package within the industry. Um, our job now is to work with the government as we have done during COVID to really sensitize people who are looking at these rates about the true cost of healthcare and, and why quality is important and therefore why we cannot make compromises. So clearly it is a discussion that will happen post-elections. Mm. Mm. Uh, Sunita, hi, good morning and uh, congratulations hi. from all of us here again, uh, Prashant, this side. Uh, you know, uh, I was talking to somebody and they were saying that uh, the government of Maharashtra tried uh, something like this in uh, 2021. They tried to yeah. regulate prices for non-COVID patients and the courts actually uh, ruled in favour of healthcare providers. Uh, does yeah. that also kind of give you comfort, you and the industry comfort, that there is a precedent for something like this or this is different? No, no, there is a precedent for something like this. And I think the big question is really, uh, can the country not afford, should the country not, you know, continue to support the healthcare industry? Because we de we definitely need to create additional infrastructure. It's not just incremental infrastructure, but a, a huge, you know, an investment at, at least 100,000 new beds just to prepare for the... NCDs that could impact the country, you know, in terms of spends of $4 trillion. But beyond that, should another pandemic come, will this country be prepared to treat it without investment in, in health care? And that to the private sector, supporting what the government has done. So clearly it is working with the government that we need to provide quality health care for our country. Mm. Mm. You know, uh, just one follow-up to that, uh, Sunita. In the interim, you said discussions, etc., will start post-elections. Uh, but yeah. in the interim, and business goes on, uh, yeah. but on prices, uh, are price increases if they are necessary because different hospitals follow different cycles. Are they yeah. a little bit on the back foot? Not on hold, maybe, but uh, are you kind of cognizant? Not uh, Are you taking lesser than what you would have normally taken because of where this is at? So prices are also linked to inflation. Inflation last year was at uh, five percent for healthcare inputs. So we have absorbed that five percent, and inflation has come down this year when you compare it to the previous year of 22, 23, and 23, 24 cycle. So I believe that tariff increases will be minimum rather than what happened in the previous year. Mm. Okay. But would these uh, would this potential negotiations? Because I mean that is I'm assuming one component, right? Uh, uh, inflation, WPI. But w will these sort of uh, nego ne negotiations, consultations, whatever, uh, which are yet to happen, will this kind yeah. of put a lid? Uh, if costs were to go up, you'll you'll not be able to take the requisite increases, or you think that will not be a factor? I'm talking about till the point that this is resolved, one way or the other. You're right. I think that you know we have we've already taken. A, a slight tariff increase to, to really compensate for cost of inputs. But looking at this uh, current dialogue, we've already done the packages that are ready for the government, where, which keeps our margin intact. But the focus is on cutting some of our costs, which we believe that with this, we can improve our margins by 100 basis points. So this effort will continue. And therefore, margin expansion is something that you can continue to expect from us. 
Hmm. Okay. Um, Sunita, hi. Good morning. This is Sonia here. I had a couple of uh, questions on, uh, you know, the game plan going forward for Apollo Hospitals because many of your peers are now going very aggressively with acquisitions. So, I want to understand, you also have some CAPEX plans on board. Tell us a little bit about that. Over the next 12 to 18 months, how much of it will be, uh, you know, through the inorganic route? What is the amount of money that you have kept aside or earmarked for acquisitions? So, we've already done two acquisitions which we'll open in 2025. One in Calcutta where we acquired a 200-bed hospital. We are actually making it a 300-bed hospital. So, this will come on stream in 2025. Uh, we have uh, a hospital in Hyderabad where which will come on stream by the end of 2025. And again, this is another 300 beds. Mm -hmm. We have uh, our Gurgaon facility which is slated for 2025. That is also an acquisition. So it is a blend of both acquisitions and Greenfield that will give us 2,000 beds in the next uh, 30 months. And, and this will really co continue to grow our network with a strong presence in, in metro cities. Okay. Uh, so earlier you had outlined the capex of around 350 crores over the next three years. Uh, is this something you're, that you're sticking to or do you think you want, you would want to build on to that as you expand further? So, 3,000 crores is what we said and uh, and we are committed 3, to... 3,000 3, crores, okay. 3,000 crores, and, but we always are uh, looking out for acquisitions and there are some acquisitions. Of course, we have also made Pune, which is an acquisition of 300 beds in Pune, Royal Madol Hospital. So we continue to have both options and uh, and I think that you can expect to see significant growth in number of beds happen in the next three years. The openings will be calibrated so we don't have a bulk of 2,000 at one time. Every year we will be opening up 700 beds for the next five years. So this growth guidance that you had given, right, of a 15% growth in FY25, uh, yeah. Is that intact, and or, or would you want would you want to sort of tweak that? That is intact. Let me be careful and say that definitely fifteen percent over and above that. When the new facilities become operation fully operational, we will see growth in excess of fifteen percent. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, just to sort of tie up that point on acquisitions, we have. Uh, <clears throat> you know, we know that, uh, the, the, you know, large uh, owner in uh, uh, financial uh, investor in healthcare global uh, uh, wants to get out. And I think we've discussed that in the past as well. Uh, but uh, has there been any, I mean, has that sort of come to you? I mean, we've got a seller and they're trying to find a buyer. Uh, so just uh, trying to get a sense from you, ma'am. Yes, um, I mean, we look at all opportunities. Uh, mm. We have consolidated our presence in the oncology space where Healthcare Global is a player. Uh, I believe our offerings are uh, in a sense that they are all India. It's a different way that we are, you know, focused on oncology. If you look at revenues and patients treated, currently we are the largest. So we will look, mm -hmm. we continue to look at these acquisitions as long as they are accretive to the company and enhance our offerings. Mm. And that's a very attractive segment in terms of margins, etc., as well for hospitals. Uh, but is that a no, ma'am, as far as healthcare global is concerned, uh, that you're going to do your own thing in that segment and you built it out nicely? So this is yes, not. Built it out nicely. Our clinical outcomes are are very very good. So I think it's a different way of operating. Okay. Uh, so, you know, I just wanted a little bit of indication on how Apollo Health Co is going to uh, go. I know we ask you this every single time, but the GMV, right, that you've seen in nine months of this year has gone up. It's, it's almost doubled year on year. So, what kind of growth are you targeting for Apollo Health Co? Well, I think we had said by the end of next year, uh, 1 billion in revenue in okay. terms of uh, 1 billion in GMV. So, we are on track to do that, but I think the most important thing is that, you know, the operating losses reduce significantly and it continues to improve quarter and quarter. So, this is, and they delivered, they are a bit neutral last quarter. So, you know, the future is looking very good. So, what are the number of registered users now on the platform and what is the kind of growth that you are hoping to see over the next 12 to 18 months? 
over 30 million registered users. Okay. So we're on track. And sorry. No, I know. I, I just want to complete that loop. Uh, you had said earlier that some investors are interested. So, any plans in terms of fundraising that you'd want to perhaps conclude by this calendar year? There's still a lot more time to go. Uh, so, anything you'd want to say on that? I believe that uh, we continue to look at investors, those that will add value, is a strategic value which is good for the company and good for the shareholders and enables growth. These are the three things that are extremely important. And I've always maintained that the right time, appropriate time, we will be talking to you. Hmm. Uh, <clears throat> I'm just one last uh, point on international patients. How is that uh, sort of segment done in the quarter gone by? It's done well. Um, I believe that, especially in the north with uh, connectivity, we've done extremely well in, in the north, uh, Delhi, Bombay, and of course, uh, southern Chennai has improved. So, so we're really expanding our reach into international markets with with connectivity in place. Okay. All right. Uh, thank you very much uh, for joining us. It's a pleasure as always having you with us here on CNBC TV 18. Uh, good Thank luck uh, with uh, business and good speaking with you uh, here as always. Well, uh